Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and we bless your name because of your gathering us together. And we know there is a good purpose, a reason why we are here. We thank and bless your name, O Lord, because of the great things you have done for us in the past and because of the things you promised to do today and the things we'll do in the future if Jesus tarries. Lord, we bless your name because you've made us partakers of the inheritance provided through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you because you've granted us not just the relationship with you, but the living, abiding faith, so that we can have all that we ought to get from you. Lord, we pray that spiritually you'll bless us tonight. Physically too, you'll bless us tonight. As we come before you and we consider this word, Lord, we pray that all that we need as we pray and as we believe and as we obey you, you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. We pray that you open wide the windows of heaven and bless all your people today, that all hearts may rejoice before you. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered and we'll see the great manifestation and operation of your power in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we're grateful to the Lord again for bringing us together. Tonight, we want to study something very important and very essential for every child of God, in fact, for every human being. Last week, if you remember, we studied Exodus chapter 15. And we went through the whole chapter containing, consisting of 27 verses. We looked at the joy, the singing, the praises of the children of Israel. We looked at the fact that they were, their hearts were full of gratitude unto God. As the Lord made them to pass through the Red Sea on dry ground. It was a great miracle. I told you last week, it became the measure of the power, of the manifestation of the power of God. In the Old Testament, every time the enemies thought about the children of Israel, they thought about the great power manifested by God at the Red Sea, in dividing that Red Sea to make them go on dry ground. And whenever they had any problem, the prophets will counsel them, will encourage and exhort them that they should remember the power of the Almighty God. After all, he had divided the Red Sea for them. But you see, because it's a long verse, a long chapter rather, we were not able to actually concentrate on verse 26, which contains an important message for the church, for the Christian, and for every creature here on earth. And that is what we're looking at tonight. Before I read that verse of scripture to you, let me just tell you this. This week appears to be very special for us. And I want to encourage everyone that today you will lift up your faith before the Lord. Today is actually going to be a combination of teaching and preaching. It's going to be a combination of study and encouragement. It's going to be a combination of studying before the Lord and also renewal, revival before the Lord. It's going to be a combination of giving you the message as well as praying to receive the benefit of the healing covenant. And uh, as I look at this week, I see that the Lord has really provided something wonderful and beautiful for us. And I want you to tell the people that uh, they may not be here tonight and they may not understand that this week we have a great thing going for us. Because on Thursday, we're going to have a real time together as I'll be talking on the secrets of protection provision, and power. The three P's that none can afford to miss in his own life. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you have, whatever you have done, whatever news or whatever circumstances may, may, may be around you, whatever may be your personal problems and whatever may be uh, the community fear that may seem to be having some influence on you, I want to tell you that these are the three things that we need. Protection, provision, and power. And when you come on Thursday, by the grace of God, I believe that all your fears will flee away. In fact, you will know that all our fears are baseless. And they have no ground, they have no basis at all. Because with the Lord, He will grant us, number one, protection. Number two, provision. Number three, power. With the protection, we are secured. 
or the provision we are cared for or the power we ourselves can stand upon the very head of demons and devils and scorpions and serpents and nothing shall by any means hurt us well then when you come on thursday you will realize what the lord is able to do and what the lord will give unto you tell your neighbors to you it is for everyone it's for believers and for unbelievers because in these days in which we live how much we need how much we need the protection of the lord wherever we are wherever we are you know some people if you look at what is happening around you you'll see them they're so much afraid they're not sure of the future and they're not even hearing from god they're not looking at the word of god you know what they're hearing they're hearing rumors from this place rumors from that place and because of that they think that there is more security for them in their village than in the city I want to tell you that the blessing of the Lord is that anywhere you are, if you are a real child of God, there is no basis for fear. You don't have to run away. Leave your business behind. Leave your, leave your family behind. You don't have to run away. Leave your children behind. And you don't have to even withdraw your children from school. Run into the village saying, I don't know what will happen. I don't know what will happen. Life is under the mighty hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. You come on Thursday. There's no basis for fear. Unpack your load if you're packing already. And settle down because there's going to be absolute protection for you. Abundant provision for you. Not only that, there is going to be irresistible power in your life. On Thursday, secrets of protection, provision, and power. For today, we're looking at this Exodus chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Look at it with me as we read together. And said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That single verse, oh yes, it's done great, great things for thousands of people since it was written. Uh, the testimonies are read concerning that verse. The great manifestation of power, the power of God that I've read concerning that verse. The preservation of the Lord concerning his own peculiar treasure that I've read concerning that verse will take more than a message to relate to you. But today, we are the people that are living. And we need to know that our God has not changed. It's ever the same. Because the word of God says, I am God, I change not. In fact, he says, it's because I remain the same. That's the reason the children of Israel are not consumed. And that is the reason any assembly, any company of believers in any generation will not be consumed. Because... The Lord remains the same. For us who are in the New Testament era, for us who are under that new covenant, we also know about Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what we read here in the covenant given to the children of Israel, we know that it's given to us today as well. And as we look at this, you will realize the great things that the Lord will do for us. Primarily, at first, this covenant was made with the children of Israel. Although if you read in the prophet Isaiah, he tells us that this same covenant will be repeated in the new covenant as the Lord Jesus Christ himself will become the great physician. And as we come on to the New Testament, we read Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. You will see the fulfillment in Christ that he himself bore infirmities and he took all our sorrows, all our pains away. And as we read in the epistles, as we read in particular, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, you will see that everything is concluded on the fact that even to the very end of this age and to the very end of this generation, that Jesus Christ will still be the great physician. He hung on the tree to take away our sin. Not only that, by his tribes, you were healed. The children of Israel had been oppressed in the furnace of affliction for many, many years. They sighed, they cried, they groaned by reason of the bondage continually. They were treated as slaves with taskmasters appointed over them. 
And these tax masters really oppressed them and caused them much suffering and sorrow. They were oppressed so that they could be weakened. But you know what the Bible says? Instead of being weak and sickly, the word of God says the more they afflicted them, that is, the more the Egyptians afflicted the Israelites, the more the Israelites multiplied and grew. Not only that, they were strong, they were even growing. Not only that, they were growing individually, their families were growing, the nation was growing. In the midst of an hostile community, in the midst of an oppressive, oppressing community, the children of Israel multiplied and grew. And I still want to remind you that God is still the same. He says, I change not. Even concerning their women, do you know the testimony we have concerning them? It says the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. You see, that is not the picture of those who are weak and sick and could barely get up. And during their pregnancies and during their uh, childbearing, they, they could hardly push and they could hardly deliver uh, when they started laboring. No, it says those Hebrew women, they were not as the Egyptians. Understand? The Egyptians had all the medical care they could have in that day. The Egyptians had all the power support that they could have in that day. And these Hebrew women were the people that were denied of medical care. They were denied of all the privileges of the Egyptian women. And yet they were more lively. And yet they were strong. And yet they were not sickly at all. You see there is special protection. For the people whose God the Lord is. Well, eventually you know this story. How they came out of the land of Egypt. The word of God says it was by a strong hand that the Lord brought them out. When Israel was brought out of Egypt. You know the testimony of the word of God concerning them. It says there was not one feeble person among their tribes. So mighty was the manifestation of God's love and power. In the midst of his redeemed peculiar people. However, while on their journey to the promised land, they seem to have taken God's special care for granted. And God had to tell them the conditions of blessing and the conditions of continued hell. Uh, you already we studied last week. You see, they came out of the Red Sea and they sang before the Lord. For three days they went without water to drink. And when they eventually discovered uh, some water they could drink. It was bitter. They couldn't drink it. And then they started murmuring, grumbling, complaining. And they started uh, saying things they shouldn't say. And words, words of doubt, words of regret, words of complaint, and words of belittling their leader, and words of belittling the power of God was coming, were coming out of their mouth. And then the Lord told Moses, after he had revealed the branch of a tree that he cast into the river and then it became sweet after that miracle had been performed for them the lord now gave them a, a, a covenant and he said now you've been taking my mercy my power the manifestation of my love you've been taking the provision you've been taking the miracles for granted now you need to understand that there is a condition by which you receive miracles of healing of deliverance of strengthening from me and he gave them what we have now it was at a time that these children of israel showed evidence of moral weakness and carnality it was at that time of need and difficulty that god now carefully outlined his conditions for the enjoyment of the special privilege of a special relationship and there is much for the christian and the christian church to learn in all days, so that we as Christians will be able to enjoy the benefits of God's covenant with the people of God. In fact, you know what the Bible says? It says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, which means then all that we're studying today, reaching aforetime, reaching before this time, they have been reaching for our learning. So that we, through the comfort and patience of Scripture, might have hope. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now, all these things happened unto them. For example, and they are reaching for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. 
It's telling us that it wasn't just for the beginning of the church, the early church. That those things had been reaching. It wasn't just for those early believers to enjoy the benefits of the healing covenant. But even upon us uh, who are experiencing the signs of the end of the world. It shows that these things are written for us as well. As we consider, as we consider this verse of scripture. We're looking at today just one verse of scripture. We're going to consider three subtitles. Number one, causes of Egyptian sickness. The reason, the causes of Egyptian sickness. And number two, conditions of healing. Not just one condition, conditions of healing. Number three, healing and health for God's obedient children. Now you will notice in that point three, there are two parts. Healing and health for God's obedient children. Actually, do you know that if you look at the scriptures very well, and I know this may be strange to you, and it may be strange to you because um, many people are not having the enjoyment of the promises of God, of the provision of God. If you look at the scriptures very well, you'll discover this, that healing, listen, healing is for the babes. The new converts. The people who are not experienced and not skilled in the word of faith and word of righteousness. And health, continued health, is for sons, the matured people of God. As we go to the New Testament, that's what you'll discover. You'll discover that the babes, the new converts, the people that just came, the people that didn't know the depths and the heights and the breadth and the length of the provision of God that we can get through faith. Healing was available for them. But as we look at those apostles, and you look at those matured people, and you look at those who have been with the Lord for such a long time, and they knew the promises of God, they knew the power of God, and they knew the things that the Lord had provided, you see that continued health was made available for them. And I've read testimonies of many, many people, many, many people that time will fail me to tell you about that enjoyed health. I've read of some that enjoyed health for 27 years. Others for more than 30 years after they discovered the truth that health was available for the matured sons of the living God. Now let's go back to point one. Causes of Egyptian sickness. Let's look at um, that verse again in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. And give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Diseases which I have brought upon the Egyptians. These diseases which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. The question is... Why did those diseases come upon the Egyptians? For what reason? For what purpose? What were the causes? Well, you need to understand that everything that happens uh, happened, happened because of a reason. In fact, this is what we're told in Scripture. That in, look at it yourself. In Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. As the bird by wandering... As a swallow by flying, so the curse costless shall not come. The curse costless shall not come. If the curse, if the disease, if the sickness, if the infirmity comes, there is a reason. The, co the curse costless shall not come. And so what are the causes of Egyptian sickness upon people? Because the Lord says in that passage of Exodus 15, 26, very clearly that he brought diseases upon the Egyptians. You see, let's go back to the beginning. Man turned away from God in disobedience. And then at that time, man lost the blessing of God and the protection of God. Man came under a curse and brought the judgment of death upon himself. Israel knew that the plagues and the diseases which came upon the Egyptians came as a result of their sin, 
of disobedience and rebellion against God and against his word. The magicians saw that when the boils came upon them. And when the boils came upon all the Egyptians, it was because of the hardness of heart of Pharaoh. And because of the hardness of heart of his people. It was because he challenged the power of God. It was because he disobeyed the Lord and rebelled against his revealed will. Because of that, all those evil things, the plagues and the diseases, came upon them. Sickness is the result of sin. If there had been no sin, there would have been no disease. Think about when God created, think about it, when God created Adam and Eve. Oh yes, they were strong, they were healthy, they were sound. There was no sickness on them. There was no internal part that was having any disease at all. Why? Because they were created in the image of God. They were righteous and holy, therefore they were healthy. But then when sin came in, the Lord said because of that, death will now come. And as death came, the messengers of death also came. In fact, the messengers of death had to come before death eventually came. What are those messengers of death? Infirmity, sickness, disease, affliction, bodily weakness, the body just getting so old and becomes so weak and I cannot function again. In fact, when you look at the scripture, on numerous occasions, sickness came as chastisement from God because of sin. And the Bible has so many records of the people that were sinful and as a result of their sin, sicknesses came upon them. you see that on your outline. Time will fail us to go to all the passages to read them. But let me just remind you and look at your outline as I go through them. And you can also read all these when you get back home. In fact, you need to read them. You must read them so that you'll be able to have thorough knowledge, thorough understanding of the word of God concerning the cause of sickness. Look at this, the barrenness that came into Abimelech's household. You know why? He had taken the wife of Abraham. And as a result of that, the chastisement came. The punishment came. And the wombs of all the women in that household were totally closed. That they couldn't have children until Abraham paid, paid for them. How about the blindness that came upon the Sodomites? Two angels had come to Sodom. And then they were in the house of Lord. But these Sodomites wanted to commit sin with them. And even though Lord pleaded with them, they said no. They still must know those two angels. That was the reason why those angels pulled in Lord into the house and then struck them with blindness. It was the chastisement for their sin. Do you remember Miriam? In Numbers chapter 12, Miriam, we read about her just last week in our study. How she took the timbrel and then she sang before the Lord. And all those women sang along with her. In fact, she was a prophetess, a leader in Israel, a leader over the women. And she sang, she rejoiced because of the miracle of the children of Israel coming out of the Red Sea. In Numbers chapter 12, leprosy came upon her. Why? Because of the misuse of the tongue. If you knew, if God opened your eyes, the numerous sicknesses that come upon people because of the misuse of their tongues, you'll be surprised. In the case of the Philistines, in 1 Samuel chapter 5, we're told of emeralds that came upon those Philistines in their secret paths. You know why? Because of their sin. Because of the way they dealt with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Because of belittling the Lord. And because of not going the way of the Lord. Not only that, you remember the insanity that came upon Saul. The Bible says, the Spirit of God left him. And then an evil spirit came upon him. He became insane. A king. Do you know that he was a backslider really? Because he had had another heart. In chapter 10 of 1 Samuel, when he turned away, when he turned his back like this, another heart was given unto him. But then when disobedience came in, but then when evil came into his life, when pride came into his life and he was rejected before the Lord, insanity came. 
you know that is what happens to people who backslide, that an evil spirit now may torment them. Not only that, you remember David now. David, that man, after God sat, he too, he backslid. He too, he committed immorality. He too, he went into adultery with another man's wife. A child was born. Nathan came and he said, that child will die. That child will die. And uh, he prayed, he fasted. We are told. He will not even take any meal at all, calling upon the Lord. The child was sick. Why did the sickness come? Was it natural sickness? Was it the thing that just came with the birth? No, it was the judgment of God. Eventually, the child died. It was chastisement. You remember Jeroboam? It's First Kings chapter 13. That young man of God had come. And it was where Jeroboam the king was sacrificing. But he was sacrificing to another god, to idols. And this uh, prophet of God came to declare the judgment of God concerning that evil practice of idolatry. King Jeroboam wanted to hurt that man of God. He stretched out his hand and said, Take him. His hand withered right off immediately. Chastisement from the Lord. Uh, Jeroboam, Jehob, Jeroboam's son became sick and eventually died. And if you read that passage, it tells us very clearly it was chastisement upon the family of Jeroboam. Gehazi, you know, was a servant of Elisha. Elisha was that man that had the power of God because of the double portion of the Spirit of God upon him. And yet, do you know that because of his covetousness, because of his love of money, he inherited the leprosy of Naaman. Uzziah was a king. But then he intruded into the service, the sacrifice of the Lord, which he shouldn't have done. He burnt incense before the Lord. And then the priest, uh, they challenged him. And he told him it wasn't his place to do that. But he will not accept. He was wrought. He was angry against the rebuke of the priests of the Lord. From the Lord, the um, leprosy came upon him. And do you know that there's a man called Jehoram in the Bible? This is terrible. You know what came upon him? It, it was a very terrible sickness, a kind of swelling in his, uh, in his bowels. And it was swelling and swelling and swelling until it busted and everything just dropped. That's the way that man died. You see, all those, the sicknesses came upon them because of their sin. You might say, but that is the Old Testament. And uh, you ask the question, don't we think that the God of the New Testament is very different? You ask the question, isn't it now whatever a person does? The Lord does not worry anymore about inflicting such a thing, such chastisement upon anyone, even if they sin. Even if they went to occultism, immorality, idol worship, adultery, fornication. Even if they did anything contrary to the commandments of God. You ask the question, does God still chastise anyone with sickness and disease? Look at the New Testament. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that many of those Corinthian Christians, they were weak, they were sick, they were sickly. Many of them died prematurely. You know why? Chastisement from the Lord. You remember the sudden death of Ananias and Sapphira. That's not just sickness. That's not just a little disease. That's not just little pain. I'm talking about sudden death that came upon Ananias and Sapphira. Why? Because of their sin. That's New Testament. You remember Saul? who later became Paul. He was on his way to Damascus. And then a light shone. By the time the Lord finished with him, by the time he was asking, what shall I do, Lord? And also to go to Damascus, to be showing you what you'll do. He had become blind. Was that a blessing? Oh yes, it was a sickness. It was a terrible thing. For three days, he couldn't open his eyes to see anything. If he had not repented, if Ananias had not come to pray for him, if he had not repented and submitted, surrendered his life, if he had continued in disobedience and rebellion, kicking against the priests and fighting against the Lord, that blindness would have continued for the rest of his life. But to see the blindness came as a result of chastisement contrary concerning a sin. You remember in Acts chapter 12, the shameful death of Herod. It came as a result of his pride. He had come to make a great oration. He, he delivered a great a discourse before the people. And the people shouted and said, This is the voice of God and not the voice of a man. Because he accepted that, the angel came and smote him immediately. 
He died and once more coming out of his dead body. Do you remember Elimus the sorcerer? Paul the apostle was preaching. And I was talking to this uh, deputy, the governor of the land. And that uh, uh, individual wanted to receive the gospel. But we're told of this bad Jesus, Elimus the sorcerer. He was resisting the preaching of the gospel. And wanted to turn away that deputy from believing the Lord. It was then that the manifestation of power came through Paul the apostle. Do you know what happened? That man became blind instantaneously, immediately. That's chastisement. You see, all those things happen, even in New Testament times, as a result of their personal sin against the Lord. Against the Lord. In fact, Jesus Christ himself, he even, he even taught this kind of doctrine. Do you know that after he had, he had healed a man who had been sick for 38 years, impotent for 38 years in John chapter 5, if you read from verses 1 through to 14, you will see he made him whole. And then he met him in chapter 5, verse 14 in the temple. And he told him, you have been made whole. You have been healed of your sickness that kept you down for those 38 years. But now, sin no more, lest a worse sin happen or come upon you. And you see, it means that if a person had been healed, even by the Lord Jesus Christ, even by the power of the Lord, by the stripes of the Lord, you have been healed. If you go back into sin, you become a gambler again, a thief again, a rogue again. Or you become a liar again. You become an idolater again. You become a fornicator again. You become an, an idol worshiper or adulterer again. If you go back into sin, do you know that a worse sickness than that one of 38 years can come upon you? Those are the causes of sicknesses. You find that all through the Bible. You find it from Genesis to Revelation. Well, you, you see all the passages I quoted, I've not quoted from Revelation. Oh yes, because there's no time. You remember the time of the Great Tribulation, because of the rebellion of the people, and because they have rejected the Lord, because of their disobedience, because of their sin, that uh, evil things will come upon them. In fact, locusts will come out of the bottomless pit and will stink the people, and the pain of it will be there for about five months and there will be no there will be no medicine that will be able to heal them you see sicknesses come as a result of sin personal sin sometimes listen to this is because of family sin but at other times listen it's because of our carelessness at other times it's because we just neglected some laws of god let me give you some examples for example if you eat um, uh, things that you shouldn't eat, you see you can become sick. Let's say, for example, you take a raw yam or raw cassava without cooking at all, without uh, doing anything at all. You just take it like that and, become, and begin to eat it. Like the animals eat the raw cassava. Like the animals or the goats eat the raw yam. If you do that, you are going to become sick. Why? Because the intestines of goats have not been given to you. God created those animals to be able to take the raw cassava and take uh, the raw uh, yam and take the raw things and eat like that and they will not be sick. If you take it, you will be sick. And uh, do you know that uh, if you, now pardon my illustration, but this is very important, I just want you to get the point. Uh, if it, the, the things that the dogs eat, you see a dog for example, it may be a little child will uh, just uh, pass uh, something out. And the dog will come and finish everything. And the dog can eat that every day of the whole year and never become sick at all. Because the intestines of that dog had been made in such a way that it could take all that. If you take once, what that dog will take for a whole year, uh, you can even go to the grave, you can be sick and you can die. Therefore, what we eat is very, very important. If we eat things that are spoiled, we can also become sick. Not only that, if we befriend the people that God says he hates. What do I mean? He says he hates the witches and the wizard. He hates witchcraft. He hates sorcery. You may not be a sorcerer yourself. You may not be a witch yourself. But then if you are inside with a, a witch or with a wizard and deliberately you know that this one has evil spirit and uh, you are friendly and uh, you are in fellowship with that individual, they could hurt your life. When Jesus, when the word of God says, come ye from out from among them, 
touch not the unclean thing. When it says you will not even suffer a witch to live. And we don't kill them today. We just separate from them. We just put a gap between us and them. Well, there are a lot of things that people do and they themselves, they bring the curse. They bring the sickness. They bring the disease upon themselves. I've been talking to you and quoting the scriptures to you without a reading because there are so many. Let us read a few of those scriptures and see for yourself what the Lord himself has said in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You see many people when they read Deuteronomy chapter 28, they read from verses 1 to 14. And they will say amen after every verse. When it says this blessing will come upon you. This blessing will come upon you. But they do not notice the condition. That it is if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. If you do that which is right in his sight. Then you will be blessed at home. You will be blessed on the street. You will be blessed everywhere. Your trade will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Everything concerning you will be a blessing. They will say amen, amen and amen. But then they do not finish reading the whole chapter. To understand. That if they go into sin, if they rebel against the Lord, if they rebel against the word of the Lord, that these are the things that will happen in their lives. Let's look at it. Don't take away from the word of God. Don't add to the word of God. Leave it as it is. Read it. Understand it. Accept it. Believe it. And obey it. It is then the blessing of God will be upon your life. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 58. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 58. It says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Already, these people belong to the Lord. They were not strangers to the Lord because the Lord says, The Lord thy God. These people had been redeemed. And these people have become the children of God. These people had been the purchase of the Lord. It says the Lord thy God. But then it says if. After you have come to know the Lord. That he becomes your God. He becomes your father. He becomes the one that is now responsible for your life. It says in verse 59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. That word wonderful means terrible. And the plagues of thy sea. Even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Moreover, he the Lord will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? Why should children of God suffer the same sicknesses as the people of the world? Why should an Israelite suffer the same diseases that Egyptians are suffering? Why should kingdom see Jesus? Suffer the same sicknesses that the Babylonians are suffering. Why should people that say they are they say they are sanctified, they say they are baptized in the Holy Ghost, they say they are soul winners, they even say they are serving the Lord. Why should they have the same sicknesses that the Egyptians have? You see the word of God that if we rebel against the word, if we disobey the word of God, then it says, Look at verse 60 again. Moreover, he will bring upon thee. All the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee, until thou be destroyed. You see, that is the word of God. In verse 62, and ye shall be let few in number. Whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. You see, that is the reason why many, many people are sick. Because they disobey the Lord. Well, the sin they commit might just be your sin. The New Testament unbelief is also a sin in the New Testament. And if it's just the sin of unbelief, all the kinds of sin that we have mentioned already in this message. If we are living in any kind of sin, how can we guarantee continual health for you? How can we guarantee that the sicknesses and diseases of Egypt cannot be or will not be upon you? If you live in sin, let's look at First Chronicles chapter 21. 
This is important. Open your Bible. First Chronicles. Second Chronicles, rather. Chapter 21. I talked about the man before, but we need to actually see what happened in his life and what came upon him. Second Chronicles chapter 21. And you will see what became of the man because of the evil in his life. Let's read it from verse 12. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast not walked in the way of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, verse 13, but as walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and as made Judah and, in, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go our him, like to the wardens of the house of Ahab, and also as slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. It says, because of all that, verse 14, behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people. The Lord is smiting here. It is chastisement. It is because of the sin. It says, behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. It is it's a terrible sin. When the head of the family is living in sin. And when as the head of the family is living in sin. The wife is also supporting him. And the children are also supporting him. It's going to bring the chastisement of God upon such a family. Verse 15. And thou shalt have a great sickness by disease of thy bowels. Until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Well look at verse 18. And after all this. The Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. And it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out. His bowels fell out by reason of his sickness. So he died of sore diseases, terrible diseases. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. You will see then that very clearly in the word of God, sicknesses come and sicknesses can come as a result of sin as a result of the evil in the lives of the people we're not going to look at psalm 107 i'm reading to you from verse 17 psalm 107 we're reading from verse 17 notice these things are very important because as we have the knowledge of the word of god You'll be able to avoid allowing sin in your life. And then you'll be kept healthy and you'll be kept strong. Psalm 107 from verse 17. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. It says we human beings, whenever we go to commit sin, we are foolish. Whenever we practice iniquities, we are foolish. It says fools because of their transgression. And because of their iniquities are afflicted, their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. Why? They lose their pity because they are sick. And they draw near unto the gates of death. Why? The sickness is so terrible because of that. They are very near the gates of death. Then it says in verse 19, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distresses. Verse 20, He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Many people go to Numbers 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them. And he will say, it doesn't matter what you have done. He sent his word. He healed them. And he will not tell the backslider he has to repent. He has to come to the Lord. They do not tell the sinners that if they want to keep on enjoying permanently the healing of the Lord and the health that he has given, that they will have to continue in obedience unto the Lord after repentance. The only quote is sent his word and healed them. And because of that, many of the people may be prayed for and they may seem to, and they may even receive healing at a moment of time. But because they do not know that to keep that healing, they need to live righteous lives. They go on in sin and terrible things and terrible sicknesses come upon them. Well, you might say that all that is Old Testament again. Let's go to the New Testament also. 
In James chapter 5. In James chapter 5. We're reading there verses 15 and 16. And the prayer of faith shall save the seed. And the Lord shall raise him up. Listen to what follows. And if he has committed sins, he sh they shall be forgiven him. You see, the Bible recognizes even here in the New Testament that the sickness may be as a result of sin. It may be as a result of disobedience, rebellion against the Lord. And then it says, the prayer of faith, okay, will heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. But remember, it might have been sin that caused that, and he needs forgiveness. If he has committed sin, he shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. Let there be confession of sin, that ye may be healed. Let there be repentance, turning away from sin, that ye may be healed. Well then, as we have seen in the word of God, from all these examples I've read to you, sins of all kinds, like rebellion, like misuse of the tongue, like hardness of heart, like fleshly lust, like fornication, like adultery, like pride, covetousness, love of money, idol worship, occultism, and, and many other personal acts of sin may cause and can cause sickness in our lives. When there is sickness, the first thing to do is to find out if we are responsible by any act of sin in bringing the disease upon ourselves. Instead of just talking to the Lord, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me. That's not how to pray for healing. You first of all examine yourself. What have I done? What have I left undone? In what way have I disobeyed the Lord? In what way have I disregarded the counsel? of the word of God through his ministers. In what way have I rebelled against the word of God? What sin is there in my life? Is it the sin of immorality? Or is it the sin of unbelief? Is it the sin of omission? Some things I promise the Lord I will do in consecration, commitment unto him, and I refuse to do it. Is it that kind of sin of omission? in my life that has caused this in my life is the lord rebuking me chastising me correcting me wanting to bring me back to my senses through the pain i have oh lord what have i done you examine your life and then if you discover any sin then you repent if there is no known sin in your life then you should resist satan and resist sickness and pray in faith Making sure there is no unbelief in your heart. Expecting the healing to come from the Lord. That leads us to the second point. Conditions of healing. The conditions of healing. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 15. And in verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken, to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord thy, I am the Lord that healeth thee. There is a big E at the beginning of this healing covenant. If thou wilt diligently hearken, it's not enough to just listen. You have to diligently hearken. You see, there are people that uh, they carelessly listen, they carelessly hearken. Uh, have you ever experienced, uh, you know, this uh, kind of thing that a person may say, uh, I've just got this cassette, I've just bought it, and I know it will be very useful to me, and I want to listen to the message. And then he puts that cassette on. While, he's, uh, while he puts that cassette on, he might be, she might be cooking. Or her children might be talking to her. Or it may be that she might even be reading newspapers. And yet at the same time listening to that cassette. Or it may be that she might uh, be thinking of another thing. It might be that uh, her mind has gone to the village. Her mind has gone to the news uh, in the newspapers. Her mind, her mind has gone into another thing. Although he says, I'm listening to a cassette. And if anybody said, what did you do in the morning? Oh, I listened to a cassette. It was a wonderful cassette. 
I listened and he didn't even open his Bible when the case was going on. He didn't understand. He didn't meditate upon the word when the message was going on. But he will say, I listen. That's not the kind of listening that will make the Lord to heal us. It says, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Not only that after you have hearken, after you have listened. It is not only the hearers of the Lord that are justified before God. But the doers of the Lord. The next condition is, and if thou wilt do that which is right in his sight. Do that which is right in his sight. You see, my brother, my sister, the coordinator may say that you are doing that which is right. He doesn't know all your life. The coordinator might say that you are one of the good members. He doesn't know all that's in your life. The members of the church might say, well, wonder why they didn't choose sister so-and-so to be this or to be that in the church. Because after all, we know that she's a member and she's living right. They don't know your life. They don't know the secrets. Do they know your thoughts? Do they know your pride? Do they know your imagination? Do they know your rebellion? Do they know your disobedience? Do they know your secret sin? Do they know the places you go at night and the places you go? Do they know your besetting sin? You didn't know the things you are covering up. If you will do that which is right in his sight. When the Lord looks at your life. When he looks at your conversation. When, we, when he looks at everything concerning you. If thou will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandment. When you do not say. I don't like that commandment of God. It's the tithes and offering that I don't accept. It is the commandment on dressing. In First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. That I don't accept. It is the one that says we shall forgive everyone that has offended us that I don't accept. It is the one that says we shall turn the other cheek. That's the one I don't accept. It's the commandment that says let your nay be nay. Let your ye be ye. Let your nay be nay. That's the one I cannot give. It's the one that says that there should be, breed, there should be a bridle. There should be a, a girdle. There should be something, a control over your tongue. That's the one you don't accept. Or it is the one concerning worldliness. Come ye up from among them. And touch not the unclean thing. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You see, that's the one that I really cannot fully accept. But it says, if you will give ear to all his commandments, and will keep all his statutes, not just some of them, it is when you are totally obeying the Lord, absolutely surrendering to the Lord, then you know that you are fulfilling the condition. Then it says, I will not put, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. In Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, I'm reading to you from verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take, I will take, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Do you know there are people that say, well, you know, I am sick now. I have not been well. I cannot serve the Lord now. I came to the church for one week. I came to the church for one month. And I have not been well. Let the Lord heal me first. And then I will know that I will serve the Lord. The Lord says no. Who are you to dictate unto the almighty God? Who are you to, to seem like you are twisting the hand of God saying do this for me now. Before I can serve you. It says look at the condition. Number one. Ye shall serve the Lord your God. If you are waiting and you say, eh, I will serve the Lord when he heals me. I will serve the Lord when he takes the affliction away. I will serve the Lord after he has delivered me. I will serve the Lord after he has provided for me. I will serve the Lord after he has given me children. I will serve the Lord after he has answered my prayer. He says, the condition is, you will serve the Lord first. You know the New Testament says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, it's after them. He will add all these things unto thee. Not that he will first of all give you all these things, then after that you'll seek the kingdom of God. You seek the kingdom of God first. You shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. In verse 26, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. You don't need to fear that you will die prematurely. You don't need to fear that sickness will take your life before your time. You don't need to fear that this may happen and this may happen and you might be killed. No, it says 
If you will just serve the Lord your God, that's the condition. If you will uh, follow the way of the Lord, that's the condition. If you will obey the voice of the Lord your God, it says, the number of your days, the number of your days, I will fulfill. The Lord can heal and the Lord does heal when we obey his commandment. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 7 rather, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading to you from verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, not just listen, keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy, which is where unto thy fathers. And then in verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. There's even promise for the animal in your house. When you are obedient to the word of the Lord, verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, all means all. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You can see the conditions in the word of God. If we're going to receive the healing of the Lord, the truth must be obeyed, and faith must be exercised without wavering. Before God is obliged to heal and deliver any sick person. Healing is the natural result of meeting the conditions stated by God in his word. All the powers of darkness cannot keep a believer sick if and when the conditions are met. And a challenge to you is to look at these conditions and come before the Lord tonight and say, Lord, I realize, Lord, I realize that many of the things that happen to me I cause for myself. Because I've not been diligently acting to the voice of the Lord. Hey, don't give excuse. And don't uh, say, I know who I am. I'm obeying the Lord. Examine yourself. And see where you have gone wrong. And see why all these things have come upon your life. There is no excuse for children of God to be sick. Or to be defeated by Satan. Because all things are possible to God on whom we believe. You can be healed instantly. When you believe the truth, obedience to God and faith in Christ will automatically set you free. Do not live in ignorance and do not live in unbelief any longer. Take an aggressive stand against sin, against unbelief, against sickness, and no demon or disease can hold you down in bondage. God in his mercy still desires to bless man and to save him, not only from sin, but also from sickness even today. To be saved, you know the conditions. The conditions of repentance and faith must be met. To be healed, the conditions of obedience and faith must be met as well. God's desire is not to heal and strengthen us for the service of Satan. That's why he wants us to repent. A person is drinking. A person is a violent fellow. A person is so aggressive, he is pursuing his enemies. A person is stealing. A person is gambling. A person is committing adultery, fornication. Now you see and he says, Lord, heal me. And the Lord is asking, do you want me to heal you and give you strength to go and serve the devil? You want me to heal you and give you strength so you can commit more adultery? You want me to heal you and strengthen you so you can go on stealing? You want me to heal you and, and, and destroy the works of the devil in your body so that the strength I give you, the health I give you, the, 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 uh, the bigger I give you, you'll go back and serve the devil? That's not the purpose of God's healing. If we are going to be healed, we're going to tell the Lord, the healing I get, the health I get, the strength I get, I will not use those things to serve the devil. I'm going to use the healing to serve my God. God's aim is to heal us and to get us on our feet for active duty in his own service. God never heals his people simply to make them easy or merely to relieve them from pain. When he takes up the burden of sickness, and disease from us, it is that we may walk the better in the way of his commandments. 
you have seen no doubt the conditions in the word of God if we're going to enjoy the healing virtues of the Lord if we're going to enjoy the healing power the healing hand of the Lord touching us and removing every kind of disease deformity every kind of sickness infirmity away from us we must fulfill the condition then we must believe that our God is the God that heals in fact he says I am God the Lord that healeth thee let's come back to Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 this brings us now to point 3 Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God thou even thou don't care what other people do others may you cannot if you want your healing if you want your deliverance if you want the power of God in your life, if you want his protection, if you want his support and sustenance, others may, you cannot, you cannot compare yourself with members of other churches and say, they use this, they use that, and say, they go this way, they go that way, and say, they lie, they are fraudulent, and say, those people, they say they are born again, and they disobey and they rebel. In other churches, they are not obedient to the leaders appointed over them. And if they are doing that, why can't I? Others may, you cannot. If you want healing, if you want the power of God in your life, if you want the favor of God upon your life, if you want the protection of God upon your life, they may do whatever they want, but you have to do what the Lord wants. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, if thou, the aged believers, the elderly believers, the matured believers, the long-standing believers of many years. You see, it is the same condition. We cannot say, well, I spent so much in time in the kingdom of God, and because of my long stay in the kingdom of God, that gives me license for rebellion, license for disobedience, or license for contradicting the word of God. You see, you as a child of God, whether you've been a child of God for 40 years, or you're just a child of God, for about four years or four months or four weeks, you still have to obey the word of God. New converts, the same thing. The word of God that you know, you have to be, you have to believe. And you cannot say, well, I'm a woman. I cannot obey the word of God. If you want healing, if you want the favor of God upon your life, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. He wants you to do restitution. And if you are hacking to the voice of the Lord your God, if the Spirit of God has been convicting you about something, it may be you, young man, the Lord has been convicting you about masturbation. And the Lord has been you that you are dirty. You are dirty. This is abomination in the sight of God. It may be that in your heart you have been rebelling against the Word of God. You have been disobeying the Word of God. You are not living a holy life. Although outwardly, when people look at you, when people listen to you, you appear to be the person that knows about holiness more than every other person. But you know inwardly, you are living a defeated life. He's now saying, if you want his protection, if you want his healing, if you want his health, if you want the fulfillment of his promise upon your life, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. Why? Because for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. That is the promise of the Lord. He says, it is the Lord that heals. Oh yes, he has the power to heal. In Psalm 103, verses 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 103, verses 1, 2, and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. He forgiveth, he healeth. He forgiveth all iniquities, he healeth all diseases. He is the Lord, a great physician. The Lord that healeth thee. And he has told us that he has the power. Not only that he has the power, he has the concern too. He has the compassion too. And he wants to heal you. If you will look up to him and fulfill the condition that he has set. Jeremiah chapter 33. 
Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6. Behold, I will bring it hell and kill, and I will kill him, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. He says he will kill and he will heal. That is the promise of the Lord. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the, on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. Third epistle of John, verse 2. The third epistle of John, verse 2. Behold, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And be in health. And be in health. Even as thy soul prospereth. Very clearly we have seen that what the Lord promised the children of Israel. He, also promised, he has also promised us, even those of us who are living today, He promised the children of Israel that He will, he will heal the sea, and He will keep those who are well healthy. God has promised through Christ to heal and to keep us healthy too. As we look at the promises of God, we know that His promise cannot fail. As we consider God as the great physician, as the healer, as the Lord that healeth thee, there are five characteristics of his healing that we need to consider. Number one, God is an efficient healer. He puts his omnipotence into operation. When he heals and no disease can resist his power. No disease can resist his power. No disease can resist his power. As we are here tonight, if you are sick, if you have any problem, and you come before the Lord, not giving any excuse, but say, O oh Lord, I've discovered my fault. I repent before you. Remember, he is an efficient healer. And your sickness cannot stand before the Lord. He will take that sickness away. Number two. He is a practical healer. The healing of the Lord is not merely an internal invisible thing. Which cannot be felt. Which cannot be seen. Which cannot be verified. He gives practical relief and healing to the sick. And the doctor will even be able to testify to it after they have tested you, because the healing of the Lord is practical. Number three, he is a universal healer. Universal healer. He heals the young, he heals the old. He heals peculiar sicknesses of women, in the peculiar parts of those women, and he also heals the peculiar sicknesses of the men, in the peculiar uh, parts, internal parts of those men. He heals the incur what the doctors will call incurable disease or long-standing diseases. And he also heals the minor ailments as well. Because it's a universal healer. You see in many hospitals, uh, some doctors will not even undertake to take a particular or to treat a particular individual. Because according to them, they feel that there is nothing the medical science can do. Because that sickness to them is incurable. Our God knows no incurable disease. There are no limits to the manifestation and operation of his power. And there is no form of disease that can be incurable unto him. Number four, he is a permanent healer. You see, when a person goes to the hospital, they may help, and thank God, there are many times they do help. But you see, no earthly physician will undertake both to restore his patient to health and at the same time give him the assurance that the disease from which he has suffered will never return to him. A human being can never give you any promise like that. That is a matter beyond the reach of the ordinary medical ability. But in the case of God, our heavenly healer, he undertakes to make his healing not only perfect but permanent. Not only that he heals you today, he even says that that thing should not come back. And if you will remain with him and remain in the kingdom of God, reading his word, learning his word, obeying his word, praying daily for more grace to obey God more, if you will stay with the Lord, he promises you that when he heals you, the healing will be perfect and permanent. 
Not only that, number five, he is a glorious healer. You see, most physicians are satisfied and happy. If they can restore their patients to the condition in which they were before the disease seized upon them, but it is different with our God, the healer. He is able to restore the sick, not only to the normal state before the sickness came upon that individual, but to one much, much better than that. What a great physician we have. You see, today we have looked at the healing covenant. We have seen the causes of Egyptian sickness. And we have seen the conditions of healing. We have seen healing for the young people, for the children, for those who are not even skilled in the word of faith, and health for the matured ones. God has made a covenant with his people to heal them. And he always kept his part of the covenant all through the wilderness journey. The Israelites always received healing whenever they came to God on the condition of obedience and faith unto him. And if they had sinned, whenever they repented and turned unto the Lord and pleaded before him, the Lord always healed them. And today is the same thing. If you will come to God in repentance and obedience and faith, he has told us, I am the Lord, I change not. Tonight, I plan to really pray with you. And I want you to also plan to pray with me. And I want you to really understand this is not just a, a revival time. I told you it will be a combination of teaching and preaching. A combination of study and revival. Because you see, this has explained everything to us. If you want to be healed, and if you want to remain healed, now you know the conditions. And you know that if there is sin in your life, if there is disobedience or rebellion in your life, if you know that you are being going against, contrary to the word of God, and therefore you have brought a lot of these evil things upon yourself, you need to rise up and really pray. Not just praying, heal me, heal me, heal me, O oh God, but saying, O oh God, I discover my fault today. I've seen my sin today. I feel guilty because of my rebellion and disobedience. It may be the sin of talkativeness or whatever it is, that has brought all this upon you. You want to come up, call upon the Lord. Rise up on your feet. And repent of whatever sin. Whatever backsliding. Whatever evil there is in your life. Please I want you to forget your title in the church. Your position in the church. Your status among the believers. You know yourself. You know your heart. You know your life. You know your secret. You know the besetting sins. You know the disobedience, you know the rebellion, you know the things that are contrary to the will, to the revealed will of God, the word of God. Why don't you come before the Lord and repent of all those evil things? It won't take you time to get the healing when you fulfill the condition. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Say, Lord, I know where I've gone wrong. Don't pray like a Pharisee. That will be covering the sin, covering the fault, covering the backsliding, and still saying, I'm better than other people. Reveal who you are before the Lord. Talk to the Lord and tell him that you want his forgiveness. And promise him that if he will grant you the forgiveness and the peace and the grace of God, you will not go back into those sins and those evil things and compromises anymore. Talk to the Lord in prayer. He's waiting for you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. But the condition is if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Do that which is right in his sight. Keep all his commandments and all his statutes. So then he says, I will not put all these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians from the Lord that he left thee. You will serve the Lord your God, then he will bless your bread and bless your water, and then will he take sickness away from the midst of thee. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. We have to repent of the sin. We have to make sure that we do not return into sin, we do not go back into those evil things anymore. Sin no more, lest an evil thing 
the worst thing come upon thee. Make up your mind and seal that covenant of righteousness with God. Be sincere in that repentance. Any restitution to be done, promise the Lord, be sincere and be firm about it. Any change of life that needs to be put in place, any change of habit, be sincere and be definite and firm before the Lord. Not that we just repent and go back to the same thing a few days after. Live right. Live a righteous life. You'll find the blessing of God will be upon your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now I want you to lay your hand upon yourself as we pray. Understanding that God cannot fail. His word cannot fail. His promises cannot fail when we stand and abide in the conditions He has given. So then, lay your hand upon yourself now so that we can pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you because of the revelation of your word today. We bless your name, O Lord, because it's so very clear. You have enlightened us. You have opened our eyes. You have made us to see the cause of Egyptian sickness on the people that call themselves the Israelites of God, on the people that say they are born again, on the people that say they are the children of the kingdom. We have seen, O oh Lord, that sin, disobedience, rebellion, bring evil, bring disease, bring plagues, and bring sicknesses of long continuance in the lives of many people. Lord, you have seen your people as they have repented, as they have come back from their wilderness of backsliding, as they have called upon the Lord to be cleansed and to be washed and to be pardoned, to be forgiven of all their sins, promising you that they will not go back by your grace to those sins and evils anymore. Oh Lord, I pray that the forgiveness will be real in their lives in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, that you give them the strength and the power to serve the Lord, to live righteous lives, to be upright before you, O oh Lord. That, Lord, the sins of the tongue, the sins in action, you will forgive and cleanse away and take away and give them the victory. In Jesus' name, O Lord, I pray that as they repent, that the peace of God will come to their hearts. That real salvation and restoration will come to them and there will be an assurance in Jesus' name. Now I bring all those who are sick before you. All those who have been tormented before you. All those who have been harassed and afflicted by the powers of demons and by the powers of Satan. I bring every one of them before you. When there is repentance, sickness shall not remain. When there is faith in the Lord, disease or sickness shall not remain. Therefore, I command right now that all those sicknesses, all those diseases, all those infirmities, be they in the head, in the throat, in the chest, in the bones, in the belly, in the blood system, in the flesh, on the skin, or those things walking about in the body. All of you, I bundle you together and I command, get out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus upon all these people who are here today. And I pray that all those who are sick and are here today, whatever sickness, the doctors might call it incurable. The doctors might say it's a long-standing sickness. They might say it's chronic. Or it might be just a minor infirmity. I come against all those sicknesses in the power of the Lord right now. And I command these people who are sick, who have infirmity in their bodies, be healed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that you touch everyone one by one. Instantaneously now, immediately now. Let your healing virtue pass through their body. Heal them, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, as well help your people to continue in obedience and righteousness. These sicknesses will take away today. I pray that they will never come back again in Jesus' name. Preserve the health of your people. Protect your people from all attack and all affliction. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray.